first laid eyes on the school, I was enchanted. I was mesmerized by the big trees and the swings and jungle gyms on the playground. I couldn't wait to hopefully be accepted into the school. And as a child, I began to imagine a fairy tale for myself. But it didn't happen, and very soon, that dream died. It died when a community that I loved didn't love me back. And although I managed to find friends, and although I managed to find friends, I didn't manage sorry, to escape the discrimination. And that's not a dream at all. It's a nightmare. Good morning. My name is Singora Bele, and I'm honored to be speaking to you all this morning. Last year, I penned three testimonies into the addendum. And today, I'd like to share with you my Cornell experience once more. My first and most vivid memory of racism happened when I was only in grade four. I was happily on my way to break. When a teacher stopped me, she had this big frown that encompassed her whole face and swallowed me whole. And she looked me dead in the eyes and said, your hair is unpresentable, it is messy, and it's not the Cornwall way. She also proceeded to tell me that I'd look better if I chemically straightened my hair. After that encounter, I believed there was something wrong with my natural kinky hair. And for a long time, I was uncomfortable wearing my natural hair to school. Now, when I look back, I feel angry. I'm angry that anyone would dare, child a ch would dare tell a child in Africa that their African hair is unacceptable. And with that, I'm angry that I was stripped from my African identity. And that was one time, one moment, one person. And that stripping of my identity didn't end there. It continued when I was barred from speaking my home language with my classmates while simultaneously having math lessons turn into this skin down. In these, in these instances, it became clear that my home language and culture was second to that of Afrikaans. And just like that, nothing was sacred. So when I look at the school now, I'm haunted. I no longer see the beauty in the trees or the magic in the classrooms. I see the things that nightmares are made of in these nightmares, I see a girl who struggles to love herself because the people interested in doing so couldn't. And that's why I'm here today. I don't want anyone else to feel the way that I did and still do. Because I wouldn't be able to live with myself if my sister has to stand where I'm standing four years from now fighting the same fight. So to the media, thank you for recording this. And to, the pro and to the protesters, thank you for fighting the fight. Together, we will make Cornwall history. And to management and the executive principal, I'd like to leave you with this. All that little girl wanted was to hear someone in charge tell her that they're sorry she went through what she went through, and that it was unacceptable, and that they were going to work very hard to make sure it didn't happen again. And that's all she still wants for the school and its leaders to take accountability and to say the words, yes, we have a problem, we're sorry, and we're going to fix it. Thank you. Thank you.